I mean, God, if I'm following the best players around in the world, around in the world, around for a year or so, I'd like to think I might shave a couple shots off my handicap. Did you pick up anything? I mean, you know, I wish it worked that way. I did get a really great golf tip that did shave some strokes off from not from a player, but actually from Sean Foley. Uh, this okay. also was at the Masters. Like we were standing there watching somebody hit on the range, just talking to each other. And I've gotten to know like Sean pretty well. And, and, you know, I'm like, Hey, can I ask you a golf question? You know, and if you say that to Sean Foley, like you better be ready for like an hour long dissertation, you know, after that. Right. And so, you know, funny, one of the other agents was there and he heard me ask him and he was like, Oh boy, here it comes, you know, so just like, here's <laughs> what I'm struggling with, whatever. And he was like, without even watching me swing, he's like, I think you've got a trigger problem. He's like, I, I try this next time you're out on the course count backwards from five. And when you get to zero, say the word swing in your mind and just pull the trigger. Like don't, doesn't matter if you're ready or not. You're five, four, three, two, one swing and you're going. And he's like, it has to be backwards because your brain, it like it's wired where if you're counting up where it's like, you kind of, it doesn't work the same way. But when you're counting backwards, it's just hard enough and engages that like part of your brain that kind of takes away your muscle control. So now you're just swinging your natural swing. And I'll be damned, he was right. Like, I started doing it, and now I do it every time. And, I, you know, I think my handicap's a little lower than it was in the beginning of the season. And I, it was 100% Sean Foley. Countdown. Oh, man. All right. We're going to have a broken tease Give aside. it a try. Folks out there undertaking the index experiment this year, trying to play their best golf with the Golfer's Journal, uh, might count down from five. Uh, that's interesting. Well, I can see that actually, though. I mean, if I was on a – a shot I was nervous about or on a first tee or something like that might be just a cool way to, to clear your head and actually get the club to move backwards when you find yourself in those moments. Yeah. Um, Apparently it, yeah. it really does like rewire your brain very shortly by counting backwards. And that takes your mind off of the technical side of it. Cause you're, you're, you're using that brain power to like remember how to count down instead of count up. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, it worked. I mean, it honestly okay. worked. It was wild that it worked, but it worked. So it was the best lesson I ever got, and I never even had a club in my hand. Now, was there um, a player in terms of, you know, you was a fan, you know what fans think of, have expectations and ideas about what Rory's like, um, what Justin Thomas is like, you know, or what Scotty Chef Like, you know, you have those preconceptions or those images or those ideas that are built through telecasts and, and through uh, brief media interviews. Who surprised you the most where maybe you said, you know what, this, this guy, you know, is nothing like people think he is. Brooks Kepka, hands down. Completely yeah, when different. you said he was grinding for four hours, I was like, why doesn't he tell that to people? He would have more fans because mm -hmm. there is this impression that he'd rather be playing baseball or something. Right. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. And he'll say that, but then you get inside of his world a little bit and you know, he longs for golf. Like he, he is, I, you know, Brooks was the most surprising player in the show by far in terms of, you know, his outward perception, at least the impression that I had and the person that we got to know and got to film with. And I think his episode and his portrayal in the show will blow people away at, at sort of what is going on in his head. Um, so Brooks, hands down, you know, the most different from Anybody that I, you know, sort of my understanding of golf and general fandom. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick, another player that, you know, kind of is flying under the radar for us and, and just turned out to be unbelievably interesting. And, you know, his approach to the statistical side of the game, you know, how incremental his improvement has been, but just like relentlessly incre incrementally improving to kind of culminate in him winning the US Open. And having it his first PGA Tour win at the same time, I mean, that was really cool. And like, I'm the biggest Matt Fitzpatrick fan now, just getting to know him. And, he, and he's just an amazing guy, like very gracious, funny, dark, sense, you know, not dark sense of humor, but like sneakily witty and, and really has a great dry wit. He's been really fun. You know, Justin Thompson, Jordan Spieth, like, you know about their friendship. Everybody kind of understands that. But getting to know both of those guys pretty well, like just, I'm, you know, fans for life. Jordan Spieth's got a hilarious sense of humor that, that I think like, you know, you may not know about just kind of watching him being a fan. Uh, really? Yeah. But yeah, they're, I, they're I, like, uh, yeah. yeah, those, those guys really, you know, really surprised me.